Hey guys, I'm back. It's Jambros and welcome to the first video in a new series of loot guides for physical DPS. This time for the upcoming Phase 5 release, which recently hit the PTR and includes the release of Sunwell Plateau. This will be in a similar format as the Phase 3 and 4 guides with a couple small changes. I'll be beginning with Enhancement Shaman this time around. Uh, so let's get into the, into the different parameters I used for Phase 5 release. Uh, still using Nojana's Shaman Sheet. Uh, an excellent resource that I'd highly recommend. Uh, all appropriate raid, party, and personal buffs and debuffs will be applied here. Uh, this is purely single target. These sims are done against a high armor boss, but with the prevalence of armor pen in this tier, low armor boss gear sets will be explained too. Uh, since a large majority of the bosses in Sunwell are demon, I went ahead and simmed these with demon slaying. Sims use complete gear sets and don't just sim individual items. Uh, when swapping pieces for testing, other item slots may be changed to keep a maximum DPS output. Uh, for example, changing gems for hit rating or switching an item around for a two or four piece bonus. Uh, all Sims use the full bisque gear for phase five and compares the best in slot to the next best item in that slot. And while the default Sim is a 7700 armor boss, a demon, for example, Brutalis or a Muru, the rest are 6200 armor, and gearing differences will be explained later on in this guide. Uh, this is a talent build we have for enhancement, fairly typical with the Rusto substack. Uh, here's a peek at the full best in slot phase five enhancement shaman. Uh, getting into the details next, uh, we'll actually start with the helm slot. Uh, the Coif of Valeria takes the top spot but it's actually very competitive with duplicitous guys, only two and a half DPS behind. Uh, both are about 30 DPS ahead of their previous tiers, Curse Vision and Sargeras. Uh, the tier six helm is not particularly good, but comes in as an okay option if used as the fourth tier piece for the four piece bonus uh, with the new set items that come in Sunwell. There are a couple options here for the neck piece, and the best one to take is only if you're a jewel crafter. Uh, the pattern drops off Sunwell Trash and is bound to you once crafted. Uh, very strong with all the armor pen and even a gem slot on a neck piece. Uh, surprisingly, if you're not a jewel crafter, the next best option is the Shattered Sun Offensive Exalted neck piece, but only if you're an Alder. The Scryer proc is significantly worse. Uh, Clutch of Demise is the only actual drop from a boss in Sunwell. Uh, comes off Brutalis and is kind of a last resort if you're neither a jewel crafter or Alder. The shoulder slot features some really competitive pieces. Uh, the top two are the male mantle of the golden forest and the leather demon two shoulder pads. These are basically interchangeable. Uh, golden forest is technically best by less than one DPS, but the blue slot and the demon two shoulder pads prove useful in a lot of sets to activate your meta gem. Uh, the tier six shoulders combined with the three new tier pieces seem to almost equal to shoulder pads of vehemence. There is only one new cloak in phase five for physical DPS. That is the Cloak of Unforgivable Sin that drops off of Kill Jaden, and everybody's going to want it. Uh, and for a good reason, even with the low stat budget of a Cloak, it's a full 30 DPS upgrade over your previously best uh, Shadow Moon Destroyer straight. Unlike Cloaks, there are actually a lot of chess piece options in Phase 5. Uh, Bladed Chaos Tunic comes out on top, but your next best options are the much easier to obtain crafted options. I'd wager to say that most Raiding Enhancement Shaman were Leather Workers, and the Carapace of Sun and Shadow is very close to Bladed Chaos, only about 5 DPS behind. Uh, Embrace of the Phoenix is also a leatherworking bind on pickup craft, but is significantly worse. Uh, the tier 6 chest for the 4 piece is way, way behind, and just not recommended at all. This brings us to the first of the 3 new tier pieces in Phase 5, uh, the Bracers. There is no real competition here for best in slot, and everybody's going to want these tokens. Uh, the Sky Shadow Wrist Guards are 21 DPS ahead of the Black Temple and Mount Hydral Racers. There are two really competitive items for the gloves. Uh, the Thalassian Ranger Gauntlets from Kill Jaden and the Gloves of Immortal Dusk, which are actually a bind on equip uh, crafted leather working item. The crafted is only 2.75 DPS behind the, the drop, and if you have the gold to burn, I'd highly recommend them. Uh, your other options are really too far behind to consider. Uh, if you can't get the KJ gloves to drop, then crafted is the way to go. The belt is the second of the three new tier pieces, and again, no competition. Uh, the belt of 100 deaths has finally been unseated because this new belt is just insane. I mean, look at the stance on that thing. Before I get into it, uh, just look at these numbers. <laughs> these are your top four options, and none of them are even remotely close to your best. Uh, the leggings of the Immortal Knight are crazy good, and nothing is close. 
Uh, everything else is a 50 to 60 DPS loss, comparatively. The feet are the last of the three new set pieces, and just like the previous two, they are on a token and have no other new items that slot coming with it in Phase 5. Meaning this one and all the other ones far outclass all the other options that come in Phase 3 and Phase 4. Uh, here you can see that the soft set boots and the Shadow Master's boots come up more than 40 DPS behind it. There are a few good options for rings in Phase 5, and on top is a new Band of Ruinous Delight. Uh, that drops off the Iridar Twins in Sunwell. Uh, Stormrage Signet Ring still holds up from Illidan uh, in Phase 4 to pair with it. The two other new rings are pretty intriguing options because although they're not better than the other two, they're comparatively very easy to acquire. Uh, the Hardcorean Band is a bind on a Quip Ring that is jewel crafted, and Angelista's Revenge is a new Phase 5 badge item that only costs 60 badges. Uh, those two are your ring minimums if you didn't get the Signet Ring in Phase 4, and the Band of Ruinous Delight hasn't dropped yet. The new Absolute Best Trinket from sure all physical DPS shows up in the Black and Nauru Sliver off Maru. Uh, what's really of note here that another new trinket, uh, the Shard of Contempt, actually drops from the new 5-man dungeon, uh, Magister's Terrace. This trinket is technically best if you can make use of nearly all of its passive expertise, and there's a lot of it here. Uh, 44 expertise with an attack power proc. Uh, DST is still a really good option here, being not too far behind. Uh, Berserker's Call is a good trinket, but it start, really starts to lose a lot of value uh, in these longer fights that we're seeing here in Sunwell. Nothing really to see here in terms of your totem. Uh, Stonebreaker is released in Phase 4, and it's best in slot until the end of the expansion by about 12 DPS. Finally, we get to the weapons, and there's a lot of information to take in here. Uh, your absolutely best combination of weapons is Hand of the Deceiver off Kill Jaden and Mounting Vengeance, which drops off of Trash in Sunwell Plateau. The Hand is the key weapon here, replacing the Offhand with a Season 4 Axe is a whole 18 DPS loss, but replacing the Main Hand with the Season 4 Axe is a whopping 62 DPS loss. Uh, going Double Axes is 80 behind the best, and for reference, Double Season 3 Axes is 117 DPS behind. So, you might be asking, what if I'm an orc? That looked like a lot of fist weapons, and orcs get that bonus expertise from axes. What gives? Well, it doesn't actually change anything at all, technically. If you use your abyss trinket, Shard of Contempt, then you've essentially maxed out your useful expertise, and the extra expertise gained from using axes is useless. You could use Dragon Spine Trophy instead of Shard to make the racial useful again. This doesn't change the best weapon combinations, however it does make axes more useful until you acquire those weapons. Here you'll see the weapon combinations on an orc race. Uh, in parentheses is the DPS gain or loss using DST instead of Shard of Contempt. Now you might also have been asking, I have all this armor pen in my gear, am I capping it out? And the answer is yes, sometimes. Here's a chart with how, uh, how much armor is left on a fully debuffed boss. Uh, in full abyss, you will never armor pen cap against the 7700 armor boss. Uh, these are Brutalus and Muru and Sunwell, even with Executioner Enchant. With a fully debuffed boss, you can safely use all armor pen items and Executioner until you have 868 armor pen on gear. Once you exceed that amount of armor pen, Executioner starts to lose value compared to Mongoose. Uh, a full best in slot enhanced shaman has 1725 armor pen. That's almost the exact same amount needed to cap against a low armor boss without Executioner, so a clean swap to Mongoose on your main hand is a large DPS increase. The break-even point for Executioner and Mongoose is right around 1120 armor pen on low armor targets. And that's it. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, if you have any questions for me, feel free to drop them in the comments below, or come watch me on my Twitch channel and ask me there. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you guys liked or subscribed if you enjoyed this content. I've got a lot more coming up for you. Thanks, guys.